I'm here with Kelly Link, and I just wanted to know, she has a new collection out, Pretty Monsters. I just wanted you to tell us how this is different than some of your other collections, like, say, Magic for Beginners. And most of the stories in here were originally published in anthologies for young adults, um, stories like the first story, Pretty Monsters. And I grew up, of course, reading young adult. I worked for years in a kid's bookstore, and I'm still really drawn to that tradition of storytelling, so I'm pretty ecstatic. The other thing is it's illustrated by a guy named Sean Tan, whose book The Arrival came out last year. It was hands down my favorite book of last year. What do you think distinguishes young adult fiction than, say, your other stories? I know, like, Fairy Handbag is in both, but what about the ones you wrote especially for the young adult market? How, do those, how, how are those different? There are a couple of things which are not common to all young adult, but which you find in a lot of young adult literature. My editor, Sharon November, said that a young adult book traditionally is about someone who is um, going through a change, someone who is experiencing something for the first time, so they can be a teenager. A lot of fantasy works the same way, so you have someone who discovers that they are actually the, the heir to a throne when before they were a, a pig farmer. And so there's a lot of crossover between fantasy and young adult. And there are books that books by people like David Grossman or uh, Margot Lanigan that have actually been published in both markets, both in, with different covers. The only difference, as far as I can tell, um, it's not so much content. It's it's really just that the the, the protagonists are are experiencing something for the first time. Wondering about the worst rejection you've ever received from a literary journal, from an editor, from anyone. The worst rejection I think I ever received was, was um, when I was in third grade and I had a crush which I thought was invisible to the person that I was crushing on. I can remember his face now and I think he actually was not particularly good looking or nice but I, I was obsessed and I would follow him and at some point his mother told my mother that I should stop following him around and I was like I have been found out. It wasn't even so much that my heart was broken I, I just was my secret was exposed and that was I still agonize over that. Any literary rejections? Um, no, actually, most of them have 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 been have been. It's not even that they're nice. I I, I don't I don't mind that kind of rejection. There was a guy who ran a magazine out of Boston called Crank, oh, yeah. and the his rejection letter was was very much in the in the same theme, and it was a sort of a page long diatribe in which he talked about the mistakes that writers make and. I always wanted one of those, so I sent a story to him, but he, he took it. You're so, you're so disappointed not to get a rejection letter. I'm disappointed. I, I really wanted a copy of that so I could frame it. It was really a beautiful rant. It was a great rant. Yeah.